Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 6, Acid and Base Reactions. This is video number 19. We're going to extend our understanding of titrations to look at the different types of titrations and how we can represent each of them graphically. So the first one we want to have a look at is the um, titration involving a strong acid and a strong base. This is by far the most common type of uh, acid-base titration that you will carry out and what you can notice is that we have um, sodium hydroxide here which is our strong base and it's going to be added to a strong acid such as hydrochloric acid. Um, as the volume of added base increases so we can monitor changes in the pH. Now of course if you're carrying out a titration and you don't have a pH meter or a pH probe you're not going to know what's going on here so you have to use an indicator in order to try and identify what's going on. Notice for the reaction between a strong acid and a strong base we produce a neutral salt and water. The neutral salt is the key here because the neutral salt is going to have a pH of 7. Our equivalence point is the point where we have the correct ratio of acid to base. So if this ratio, for example, is 1 to 1, then the equivalence point is the point where that occurs. But what you notice happening with a graph like this is that there is a minimal change in the actual pH as we're adding our base until uh, we have reacted a fairly large amount of that acid and then the change is very rapid. So you can see here from say around about 20 mils to 30 mils, so only 10 mils of our base solution, we have a massive rise in pH going from about 2 at this point to 12 at this point. Now that's a massive rise. Trying to trying to figure out exactly what the point where the um, solution reached a pH of 7 is virtually impossible. So what we want to try and do is we want to try and instead find what we call an end point. And the end point is where we end the titration. That's where we're going to stop. And that point, we want to be as close as possible to that vertical section of the graph. Now, in reality, it's going to be uh, probably somewhere in this region. And certainly, we hope it is not somewhere up here because that's an overshoot. You've massively gone past that end point and you've added too much of your solution and so it's going to affect the accuracy of your final calculations. This is the point when we're looking at different types of um, uh, acid-based titrations as well because that tells us something about the type of indicator that we need. So if we start with our acid and then we're coming out at a pH of around 11, then phenylphthalein is a particularly good indicator to use. Down in the acid region, it is colorless. Please don't write clear, please write colorless. Uh, and it changes to a pink color as it reaches that higher pH. In fact, a pH above about 8.5, something like that. So it's gonna go through that point and you're gonna to start to get that very pink tinge. And that's what you want when you're doing a titration with these two. You want that very pink tinge to tell you that you've just hit that um, end point. You've gone past the equivalence point, which is very hard to stop at, but you've got that end point and you must stop there. Another way of representing a reaction between a strong acid and a strong base, and certainly others as well, is to look at conductivity. If we think about the fact that our strong acid fully dissociates, so let's look at some ions, and our strong base is also dissociating into ions. These are our four ions that are present that we're adding into the solution. Now, obviously, if we're adding the latter two, then we've got lots of these ones in there initially. As we add them, we're going to be withdrawing H plus ions, which are going to be reacting with the OH minus ions to form water. Water is a molecule, so it's not going to conduct, and therefore the conductivity as this reaction proceeds is going to go down. Now, it's actually going to reach a point where we have an excess. So once this, this hopefully here is our limiting agent, and this one is in excess. 
And because this one is in excess, once we go past that point, the um, ions will start to rise again. So the ion concentration rises. And so where we find these two uh, lines intersecting, that's the point where we have um, our maximum um, amount of sodium hydroxide added before it starts to take over as, as, as an excess um, solution. So that helps. It's another way of finding out with that exact point of where the um, equivalence point is, where we've got all of our H plus ions having been reacted, but we don't have an excess of OH minus ions just yet. The situation is different when we look at a couple of different types of, of curves, and we'll just briefly touch on these because they're all things you're going to look at in a bit more detail in class. The problem that we have with a weak acid and a strong base is the weak acid is going to form a strong conjugate uh, base. So, theref uh, so therefore, we're going to have a basic salt. And we're also going to have uh, water. So this time our salt is not neutral. It's actually a salt that is going to have a pH greater than 7. So two things uh, to notice about this. First of all, you've got this rapid initial rise, which we didn't see previously. And that's because the weak acid is not fully ionized. And therefore, the addition of the base is going to shift the equilibrium. It's going to use up all of the H plus ions and therefore shift the equilibrium in order to produce more H plus ions. As that process continues, we'll eventually have as many H plus ions as there are um, from that weak acid. And we're going to go through our equivalence point. So again, we've got this vertical section, which we saw in the previous graph, but the vertical section is shorter and it's also not at the same equivalence point. You can see this time the equivalence point is actually in the basic range. So we've produced a basic salt as well as water. Hopefully you're seeing that the same sort of thing, logic, we can apply to the third situation. And the third situation is one where we have a strong acid plus a weak base. The problem this time is the weak base is going to form a strong conjugate acid. And therefore, we're going to have an acidic salt plus water. As a result of this, we're going to have our base uh, pushing its way through very slowly. Um, reacting with the acid, but then once uh, we get to that equivalence point again, you can see we get the vertical region of the graph, but this time the equivalence point is actually at a pH which is below 7 because the salt that we're producing is an acidic salt. There's a lot more reasons why this stuff is happening and we need to go into it in a little bit more detail and you will. And of course, the other problem is if this is happening when we've previously chosen phenolphthalein as a good choice of base uh, of indicator, now we can't do that because phenolphthalein is going to change beyond where our graph is going to uh, emerge from the equivalence point. So this time we don't use phenolphthalein. Usually we'll choose uh, something different like methyl orange which uh, changes quite low in the pH range. So it'll allow us to see that change occurring. I haven't added the um, titration of a weak acid and a weak base because if you've got a weak acid and a weak base, they're both shifting equilibrium and it takes weeks. So we don't do it. Um, simply put, we don't look at reactions between weak acids and weak bases. So we'll put them to one side. Just focus on these other three. Look at some examples. Have a look at the application of the indicators and continue to refine your techniques. Good luck and thanks for watching.